In this screencast, I want to take a quick look at the Pathfinder tools. So I'm going to draw a couple of shapes out here in my workspace just to get started. Some objects to work with. Now I'm using the Essentials Classic workspace and by default it doesn't have the full Pathfinder palette um, available. So I'm going to go to the Window menu and go down to Pathfinder to invoke that panel. There it is. So the Pathfinder panel is made up of a shape, shapes modes as well as Pathfinders. And they each behave a little bit. There's some redundancy in them. Some act just like others. But we're only going to look at a couple. You can kind of explore them and figure out what the rest do. There are two different ways to use Pathfinders. I'm going to use them initially to modify the paths. Sort of, um, yeah, to modify and create different path shapes. But you can also use them as an appearance object as well, which I'll look at here in just a moment. So I have two shapes here, and it's important to know that it's important to know that some of these most of these commands will behave differently depending upon or give you different results based upon which object is in the front and which object is in the back. And I've colored these differently so we can easily tell. The circle's in front, the star is in back. So I'm going to start with both these objects and the Unite option. If I use the Unite option, it is simply going to take those two sh shapes and melt them into one. So if I look at the outline mode, I can see that this is one continuously closed path, nice simple path. I'll undo that real quick, switch back to outline mode, so you can see the individual paths of both of those. The second one here is the minus front, so it's going to take the object that's in the front and subtract it from the object that's in the back. So selecting both of these, minus front, you see that I'm left with just the tips of the star. Illustrator kind of subtly groups objects, so if I take a look at the layer panel, you'll see that this whole shape is simply a group of objects. All of those different tips are, are grouped there. And so if I go to the object menu and I ungroup those, they're all individual and I can access them that way. So let's undo. All right. And moving on across this Pathfinder's intersect, so it will give us, so if we select it, it will give us the area of overlap. And the last one is exclude. And it will sort of punch a hole. If I were to drag this over here. And this is really just a grouping of objects that it, that it creates again. And then our pathfinders down here, we have trim, or divide, trim, merge, crop, outline, and minus back. Minus back is simply the opposite of minus front. If I use divide, and then I ungroup all those objects, you'll see that it kept the appearance of all those objects, but divided them all into separate separate pieces.
trim, we'll do the same thing. I select both of these and I trim. And ungroup them. It leaves behind the appearance of all the shapes when you do that. So one other feature that I want to jump to real quick, and then I'll leave you to play with these on your own, is oops, undo this a couple times. That I can use these as a shape modifier as well. So if I have both of these, my circle and my star selected and hover over, you see that there's a note, option click to create a compound shape and add to area, to shape area. So if I hold down the option key, when I click on my Unite tool, I get visually the same results as I got before. But if I look in outline mode, you'll see that both of my objects are still there. It's just creating the appearance that it blended them both together. The benefit to this is that if I either double click on that shape and enter isolation mode, I can grab the shape and move it. I'll go back to preview mode real quick. And I can fine tune the appearance that I get. So maybe that's more what I wanted. Move that out there. now one compound shape. When I use these as an appearance, I always like to make sure that when I've got everything the way I want it, you'll notice that the expand button is now active on the Pathfinder panel. I'll click expand and now when I look at this in outline mode, you'll see that I've got a, a view similar to what I had way back here when I just used the Unite tool. So, holding down the option key will give it the appearance that it's making the change, but you can still modify both of your original objects in any way that you need to. So, let's, let's see. Undo all of this. Get back to where I was. All right. The same thing goes for any of these other tools. I'll, I'll do the minus front real quick. Hold down my Option key. And now, double click. Maybe that was more of what I originally intended. And now when I've got it the way I want it, expand. So I can build up shapes in any way that I want to. For instance, if I have a cloud that I need to draw, I can create a few shapes. Grab my rectangle tool. Sort of build up my shape could have built this with a pen tool, but by using primitives, I get nice, perfectly clean arcs and circles. Select those. I'm going to make that a compound shape by holding down that option key so I still have access into these objects in case I still want to make small adjustments to them. I can do that fine-tune it, and when I'm done, expand it, and I have my cloud. Or, quick, simple ice cream cone.